Are you listening? You know where we're at. We found a guy with a welder. His name's Mike. You remember Mike. Mike was here for the uh, install video. Yeah. We did it here at Cruise Air in R32. Pretty much on, is the only person with a working MIG welder that I know right now that's local. Steven's out of town. Frankie and Anthony's is broken. And P2's way too damn far. Yeah. Not going long beach. So Mike said, we'll come on down. We'll see if we break ours. Yeah. <laughs> Mike kind of had some good tips. So I've heard all this stuff before, but maybe you could run us through on the actual like process on what you want to do with this because you had a couple of good things to say off camera and I just want you to kind of repeat it for the people. If you don't want to die, if you don't want to die. Be careful on the brake cleaner that you're going to be using because you could make some phosgene gas and clear the whole room out. Pardon my French. Don't die. <laughs> Not how we look. Don't die, boys. We bought this brake cleaner, and I guess there's some stuff in here that might be hazardous to us, so don't use that. You got mineral spirit that is essentially a degreaser and cleaner Correct. without all the crazy harsh chemicals. Yep. Another thing you were saying was that the material on these gears is hardened. It's pretty hardened, pretty thick. You're going to want to preheat that. This way you could actually get like some good penetration off the start so you don't get like a cold well to begin with and then actually start penetrating after that. Because so. essentially a cold weld, you'd be welding on top of the material right. versus preheating the gears, you're actually working into the material. Yeah, yeah, it heats up a lot faster, if that makes any sense. No, it makes perfect right. sense. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. All right, let's do it. The mineral cleaner brought back the original color of those gears and gear. That stuff's crazy, dude. All right. <laughs> Both sides spin together, the spider gears are locked up, and that's going to create the foam that you want to slide out of the room. Because essentially you're taking, uh, the inside wheel spins at a slower rotation than the outside wheel when making a turn. Now we're locking them together, which is forcing the inside wheel to spin as fast as the outside wheel, which causes the car to lose traction. Drift. Eight, essentially eight welds to lock up a differential. You can get crazier and put like a plate in there and weld it all together and get savage like what we used to do. But this is again, 180 horsepower, maybe, on a good day, that we're gonna be throwing through this, so really doesn't matter. What are they, temporary plates? Some ATF? Uh, I'm sure, why not? Uh, or you could just do a steak plate. Yeah, but I mean, I. It's a little, a little bit of an oil cocktail. That's probably good, huh? <laughs> good enough for what we're gonna do. 10,000. Dips going back in. Uh, Test drive time. Yeah. Good job, bro. Thank you. Thanks, Lorenzo. Well, did you hear it? Yeah. So I tell Lorenzo when he starts trying to tell me stories. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, the dips definitely make the car feel a lot tighter to drive. Still slow as balls. Oh yeah, it's got a new ratio in it now too. Does the ratio feel better or does it feel much better? That's third. Yeah, feels yeah. better. Do you like how the whole car is freaking? <laughs> just like half track right but then if you do like a medium to long hold the brake light comes on now you have uh, full and I always wonder that too on my 46 I'll click it and it'll shut me down I'll be like what the that's what it is okay figuring it out go for it great shout out lorenzo thank you for your help hugo also thank you for your help let's go back to america now mexico trip was fun next up i think it's coilovers and stuff that i don't know be a boat. yeah that won't be a boat for sure all right boys as always thanks for watching stay safe